This is SpaceX's Dragon, a spacecraft that's earned its reputation through years of reliable missions to low Earth orbit. But what if SpaceX took things a step further and transformed Dragon into a deep space explorer? Well, they actually did. Meet Dragon XL, SpaceX's upgraded version of Dragon, designed specifically to resupply NASA's Lunar Gateway Space Station as part of the Artemis program. Yeah, it's just as awesome as it sounds. A Deep Space Dragon isn't just a cool engineering feat, it's a smart move. It offers an affordable and ready-to-go solution that fits seamlessly with the pressing objective of getting humans back to the moon ahead of China. But here's the twist. NASA's latest budget proposal could throw a wrench in everything. It's slashing funding for some of Artemis' core components, including the Lunar Gateway and critical logistics systems like Dragon XL. That means it's time to start thinking outside the box. Can Dragon make it to the moon without relying on NASA's infrastructure? We're diving into all of that and more right here on today's episode of TechMap. NASA's proposed 2026 budget is turning heads, and for good reason. It marks a dramatic shift, winding down key elements of the Artemis program. We're talking about retiring the Lunar Gateway Space Station, the Space Launch System rocket, and the Orion crew capsule, all after just two more missions. Given the program's track record of delays and budget overruns, this move might not shock many. But it does come with some disappointment, especially for fans of SpaceX, because it effectively cancels one of their most. Now, Dragon XL isn't just a larger version of SpaceX's existing Dragon. It's a dedicated cargo vehicle built specifically for deep space, intended to revolutionize how we deliver supplies beyond Earth. Under NASA's Gateway Logistics Services contract, Dragon XL, launched atop the powerful Falcon Heavy, was set to begin lunar deliveries sometime between 2025 and Artemis IV's crewed mission in 2028. But if Lunar Gateway is off the table, Dragon XL's future looks bleak. It was designed to dock with a lunar orbiting station, and it's far too big and over-engineered for simpler missions like resupplying the ISS. So, is this the end of SpaceX's Lunar Dragon dreams? Not quite. Enter the Grey Dragon concept, an idea put forward by Dr. Robert Zubrin, president of Pioneer Astronautics. Back in 2020, Zubrin penned a compelling article titled, Send the SpaceX Dragon to the Moon. According to him, NASA's SLS isn't strong enough to send Orion all the way to low lunar orbit and still return it safely unlike the Apollo-era missions. That's why NASA envisioned the Gateway, a sort of halfway house in high lunar orbit. The problem? This detour makes the mission far more complex and fuel-hungry, especially for landers trying to get from Gateway to the Moon and back. It's like using a Rube Goldberg machine to do a simple task, and it's both expensive and time-consuming. Zubrin proposes an alternative. Why not use SpaceX's existing Crew Dragon capsule instead of Orion? Crew Dragon weighs around 9.5 tons, slightly heavier than Apollo's capsule, but offers much more interior space. It's dramatically lighter than Orion's 26.5-ton bulk and comes at a fraction of the cost. With a few upgrades, like extra oxygen storage for a six-day round trip, Crew Dragon could be moon-ready. The best part? We don't need to wait for the SLS. Falcon Heavy is already operational and more than capable of launching Crew Dragon to the moon and bringing it back. No gateway required. Zubrin envisions a first mission similar to Apollo 8, an uncrewed or crewed lunar flyby to prove the concept. After that, a lunar landing could follow using a separate lander, launched by another Falcon Heavy. Yes, it still requires two rockets, but they're affordable reusable and already flying, unlike SLS, which costs 10 times more. NASA has already contracted Blue Origin, Dynetics, and SpaceX to develop moon landers. Zubrin argues that SpaceX, the force behind Dragon, has the innovation and drive to make this new approach work. In short, adopting the Gray Dragon plan aligns perfectly with NASA's evolving priorities focusing on commercial partnerships, 
rather than relying on expensive legacy systems. It's a faster, more efficient path to lunar exploration and one that could reignite American leadership in space by leveraging private sector innovation. So what do you think? Does the Grey Dragon concept excite you as much as it excites us? Drop a yes in the comments if you're ready for a new era of moon missions. So if the Grey Dragon is built, have you ever wondered how that compares to SpaceX's Dragon XL, which was built specifically for NASA's now shaky Lunar Gateway program? Let's start with the Dragon XL. This big boy was designed to be NASA's trusty lunar delivery truck. Think of it as the UPS of the moon. Its main job is to haul cargo, not people. It's capable of delivering up to 7.6 tons of supplies, 5 tons pressurized, and 2.6 tons unpressurized. Now here's the catch. Dragon XL isn't coming home. It's expendable. Once the mission's done, it undocks and drifts into a heliocentric, sun-centered orbit, basically retired forever. That means no heat shield, no parachutes, no return systems. And because of that, it's lighter, cheaper, and optimized purely for cargo. It launches aboard the Falcon Heavy and can stay docked to the gateway for up to 12 months, acting like a storage unit and science lab in lunar orbit. Efficient? Sure. Reusable? Not really. Now let's flip the script. The Grey Dragon isn't real yet. It's more of a concept. Proposed by space visionary Dr. Robert Zubrin. But if it were built, it would change everything. This would be a crude version of the Dragon spacecraft, modified to fly directly from Earth to the Moon and back again. No gateway in the middle, just a straight Earth-Moon-Earth -Earth trajectory, Apollo style. Because it's carrying astronauts, it needs to be fully loaded with life support systems, radiation protection, and crew accommodations for a round-trip lunar journey. And unlike the Dragon XL, this spacecraft is designed to survive re-entry. So it keeps the classic heat shield, parachutes, and all the tech that brings your astronauts safely back to Earth. Yeah, it's heavier and more complex, but it also opens the door to independent lunar missions, with or without NASA. The Grey Dragon could team up with a separate lunar lander, launched on another Falcon Heavy, allowing astronauts to orbit the moon and then touch down using a commercial lander. No need for the costly and delayed SLS rocket. No need for gateway. Although the concept of the Grey Dragon is still just a proposal, NASA has developed a detailed backup plan without the lunar gateway. This plan blends the agency's flight-proven hardware, like the Orion spacecraft and the powerful SLS rocket, with next-generation, cost-efficient technology, such as SpaceX's Starship. The mission begins at Launch Pad 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, scheduled in mid-2027, where four highly trained astronauts, drawn from one of the most diverse astronaut corps in history, will lift off aboard the SLS. Their 30-day journey will kick off with a ride into Earth orbit. There, they'll carry out system checks and adjust Orion's solar panels. Following that, the SLS's interim cryogenic propulsion stage will provide the critical boost needed for a translunar injection, launching them on a path to the Moon. Over the next few days, the crew will make minor engine corrections to align with the Moon's gravitational pull. At the perfect moment, Orion will execute two engine burns to enter a specialized lunar orbit known as the Near Rectilinear Halo Orbit, NRHO. This orbit was selected from hundreds of candidates because of its long-term benefits. It provides continuous communication with Earth, access to diverse lunar landing sites, and fuel efficiency thanks to its gravitational balance between Earth and the Moon. NRHO was originally intended to host the Gateway Lunar Station a future hub for Artemis missions. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System will be fully prepped for its lunar debut. Its job, rendezvous with Orion in lunar orbit, ferry astronauts down to the moon, and return them afterward. Before the crew even launches, SpaceX will send a propellant depot into Earth orbit. Reusable tankers will then make several trips to fill it up. After that, an uncrewed Starship will launch link up with the depot 
fuel up, and perform its own translunar injection burn. It'll cruise for about six days to reach NRHO, where it'll wait for the astronauts. Once both Orion and Starship arrive in NRHO, they'll dock to prepare for the first moon landing of the 21st century. Two astronauts will transfer to Starship, while the other two stay aboard Orion. Orion will then undock and maintain its orbit around the moon, an orbit that lasts approximately 6.5 days, matching the duration of the surface mission. As Orion completes its orbit, the astronauts on the surface will wrap up their groundbreaking exploration and lift off to reunite with Orion for the journey home. This is when human space exploration takes a giant leap forward. Once on the lunar surface, the astronauts will carry out groundbreaking scientific work both inside Starship and during multiple moonwalks. Clad in next-generation spacesuits designed by Axiom Space, they'll exit through an airlock and descend to the moon's surface using Starship's elevator. These advanced suits offer greater mobility and flexibility than anything used before, allowing the crew to explore more terrain than previous lunar missions ever could. While on their moonwalks, the astronauts will capture stunning photos and video, study the geology, collect samples, and gather critical data to accomplish a wide range of scientific goals. The South Pole region of the Moon, where Artemis III will land, looks dramatically different from the equatorial regions explored during the Apollo missions. With the sun hanging low near the horizon, the crew will traverse landscapes bathed in long shadows using headlamps and navigation tools to guide them through this otherworldly environment. The discoveries they make here will deepen our understanding of the Moon's South Pole, its history, and even broader questions about our solar system. Back on Earth, Mission Control will stay in constant contact with the astronauts, receiving updates on what they're seeing, hearing, and experiencing in real time. Thanks to cutting-edge communication systems, high-quality images and video will stream back to Earth allowing people everywhere to witness this historic mission as it unfolds. After approximately 6.5 days on the moon, the astronauts will launch from the surface aboard the Starship Human Landing System to rendezvous with Orion in lunar orbit. Once docked, the team will spend up to five more days in space, transferring precious lunar samples and preparing for the journey home. When the time is right and all four crew members are safely aboard Orion, They'll fire its engines to slingshot around the moon and begin their return to Earth. During re-entry, Orion will blaze through Earth's atmosphere at speeds nearing 24,855 miles, about 40,000 kilometers, per hour. Its descent will be slowed by 11 parachutes before finally splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. Recovery teams from the U.S. Coast Guard and U.S. Navy will be ready and waiting to safely bring the crew and their spacecraft back home. 